27th. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, would you yield for a series of questions from your favorite freshman senator? Yes, I, yes, I would, Senator, of course. Thank you. Um, senator, you, I assume, believe in voter privacy, correct? I do, and that's another problem with this bill. Why would you support a system that inherently segregates able-bodied voters from disabled body or disabled voters? So, Senator, the largest risk of this system is that um, a computer hacking or malfunction could destroy the legitimacy of the election through the machines. There is, of course, a need for us to take care of disabled voters, and that's why most states do hand-marked paper ballots, and then they do have um, a, a machine more like this for the disabled. But it still makes all the sense in the world to have the most secure, best, and least expensive system for the vast majority of voters. But isn't it true, Senator, that if you segregate the voting process, that if a precinct were to have one or two or three disabled voters who had to vote on the machine that you're in favor of them voting on, and everybody else voted on a paper ballot, doesn't that eliminate their privacy when people can see how they voted in a recount process versus how the other folks voted in a recount process? It's actually fascinating that you asked that question. I wasn't even gonna go into it, but there's yet another problem with at least two of these vendors, which is that all of the scanners encrypt a timestamp. So if anyone in a small county, in particular, it's the biggest risk, but any poll worker, whoever, that has access to the inside of the machine has written down the order that people voted, no one's vote is secret on these things because of the timestamp, and I've seen the user manuals referring to the timestamp, and that's another question that we have because if that is the case, and, and those documents are accurate, which I believe they are, then none of our votes are secret on these machines, and that violates not only the bill, but also the Georgia Constitution. Thank you, Senator. I'll just restate my question, if you don't mind. Isn't it true that with your bifurcated proposal of different types of machines for different people, doesn't that inherently remove privacy for those who, because they have Alzheimer's or because they uh, may be not able to mark the paper ballot, doesn't that remove their privacy? Senator, my answer is these machines remove, have the high risk of removing the privacy for every single voter, disabled or not. Now, to Senator, answer your question, we do, of course, need to make sure that there is a way for the disabled to vote. But uh, under your scenario, we're all in worse shape. If you don't mind, I'll continue with my series of questions. Sure, absolutely. Isn't it true what you're talking about time stamping also true of our current voting machines? I'm not, I've, I, I, I do not know the answer to that. Okay. Um, but there are a lot of problems with our current machines. I'm glad you mentioned that. Isn't it true that every member of your party who is still in this body voted for the current machines? I have no idea. That was like 20 years ago. It was, but I'll, if I may, that the senator knows of what he speaks. Um, oh, I have another okay. question <laughs> about your, um, your unfunded, <laughs> you made a mention of unfunded mandates. Um, and isn't it true that if we go to paper ballots, you mentioned OSET earlier today, that their estimation was $95 million. The Secretary of State's estimation was $163 million. Isn't it true under whichever number you believe, if you meet halfway in the middle, call it, call it over $100 million, isn't it true that that also is an unfunded mandate to the localities? The, the, the thing is, the Secretary of State's numbers, as I already mentioned from the Freedom Works letter, have been called out as being completely is like peddling false numbers, so I don't really want to talk about theirs at all. Can you repeat okay, your question without referencing Sure, them? let's reference OSET's numbers, okay. which are um, $97,240,000. Uh, that's not the numbers I have, Senator. They had two sets of numbers. They had a okay. low number and a high number. That's their, that's their high number. Um, and I actually have a little bit of insight into this because my father's a ballot salesman in Illinois and has been selling paper ballots for a number of years, and so I've ran some of the numbers by him, and he actually said that based on the pricing they do throughout Illinois, that the Secretary of State's numbers were pretty accurate. With one exception, he said probably 110% of the voting population needed to be printed versus 120. So I've actually, in my own analysis, discounted them. A little high, them. a little high then. But whether yeah. it's 90 million or you take their lower number, which I think was in the 60s, or you take 80 million, isn't that an unfunded mandate? So the numbers I'm looking at are just, are you talking about the differential between the, um, Handmarked paper ballots with moderate ballot printing 
and uh, or high ballot printing. That's right. I'm talking about the ten year the yeah, on a ten year on a ten year uh, life cycle of these machines. The, the, so the ninety million that you would get to between the moderate ballot and the uh, BMD. Just the ballot printing, just printing paper ballots. Forget the BMDs for a second. So I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. My question is, isn't ballot printing, which is expensive, between 40 cents and 65 oh, cents I, oh, okay. per voter? And as you know, we would need to print uh, ballots for every voter, even though we know every voter won't show up. Isn't that an unfunded mandate? Senator, you're preaching to the choir on that. I do think we need all these questions answered before we vote for this bill. Do you think that the reason since that is an unfunded mandate, do you think that's the reason why ACCG has supported this notion is to avoid the unfunded mandate, let the state bear the bulk of the burden of the cost while not passing on the burden of that cost to the localities, the counties, which is what would happen if we did have paper ballots? I don't want to speak for ACCG. I, I believe that their stance on this, which was developed a while ago, arose not from any, anything related to what you were just mentioning, but instead from the election supervisors. Thank you. And you mentioned earlier in your question, and you mentioned it again today, that this is, would probably be the largest contract, um, and that very well may be true. How many states, Senator, require a uniform voting process throughout all the counties in their states? The only ones I know of for sure are us and Delaware. I think that Oklahoma does as well, but it's okay. less than five states. So, Senator, isn't it true that by virtue of anything that we do, since we're mandating that it's uniform, and since we are using a single point of purchase via the, via the state, isn't it true that no matter what we do, we're going to be at the top tier of the expenditure because we will be the largest body making the largest purchase in a mandated situation, whereas 45 other states don't have a statewide mandate? Well, uh, two responses to that, Senator. Uh, the first is that it gets back to the exchange I was having with the Senator from the third, whereby it is not recommended that a state have an all-in-one system at every single precinct across the state because it doesn't leave you any room for error. So that's the first thing I would say is we shouldn't even be doing it this way. We should ha be able to have different systems so that we can have feedback and data to make sure we're utilizing the ones that work best. And then my second answer would be yes, of course our contract is gonna be large, but as the OSET report that we were just discussing points out, it is far larger using BMDs than using paper ballots. I, I will, I'll get, certainly give you that, Senator. Um, you mentioned the different machines. Can you sp help me understand more of what you would mean by different machines in different localities? There are, it, it is my understanding that um, because, as you so agreed, very few states do it this way, where everyone uses a uniform system, every voter in the, in the state, it's done at the county level. And they recommend against everyone purchasing the same machines. It's done at the county level or at the city level. So that allows for different systems to be utilized. But are you referencing different types of ballot marking devices? You're referencing different types of op optical scanners for paper ballots. What would you advocate for in, in that deployment? Well, what I'm advocating for currently, based on all available information, having received none that contradicts it in any real fashion, what I'm out advocating for is the hand-marked paper ballots with optical scanners. I don't have, I'm not privy to any other conversations occurring across the country other than ours here, other than it is my understanding that 70% of people are voting on hand-marked hand paper ballots. So that result would speak for itself to a certain extent. Okay. Um, you mentioned malware earlier as well, and you're a, a student of the law. I've um, owned a software development company for 14 years, so I'm a student of computers. Isn't yeah. it true, Senator, that any computer can be hacked? It is, Senator. And isn't it true, Senator, that the optical scanners that will require the vote, the counting of the vote, will require human programming? Yes. And isn't it true, Senator, therefore, that since they will require human programming, the optical scanners are also subject to malware attacks? Those, those also, as I was saying with the Senator from the third, it's not that there's no risk, but as the National Academy of Sciences said in its recent report, while paper ballots also can be tampered with, the risk cannot be compared. An electronic system is vulnerable to a system-wide failure or cyber attack, while hand-marked paper ballots would have to be tampered with one by one. The Senate. same report asserted that ballot summaries are impossible for voters to verify and says malware, suspicious software that includes worms, spyware, viruses, Trojan horses, and ransomware 
is perhaps the greatest threat to electronic voting. Thank you, Senator. This will be my last uh, question. And, and maybe what the folks left out of that statement, isn't it true that unless you have human counting, which I don't hear anybody advocating for, that under either system, the last stop in the voting process, whether it's a ballot marking device that prints the selection or it's a hand-marked paper ballot, the last step in the process is a computer that can be hacked. Isn't that true, Senator? That may be true, Senator, but what you're saying essentially is these machines have that, both have that problem. And what I'm saying is it is true that you don't eliminate all risk, but how can you make the argument that, that, that these are equal or better when we also have eight other fantastic reasons that, that these are bad? Cost, they might be decertified, they are less secure because there, there's a computer interface at both sections. Cybersecurity experts are against them. Voters are against them. The right and the left are against them. Like, th then there are like 14 other reasons for why these are bad. So they're just, I just don't get it. Maybe you can explain to me when I come back to my seat. I'd be happy to do that. And I would like to thank you for indulging your favorite freshman senator. I, I'm just so glad you've joined us.